Hey Aliupa, my name is Eric Dore and in today's video we are talking about the ENFP and we talk about the ENFP because it is the ENFP theme of the week. And how did it become the ENFP theme of the week you might ask? Well, I recently put up a poll and so far ENFPs are in the lead with two votes and uh, while that may not seem much that just means that next week maybe another team, maybe another type will win. So if you go on my Patreon page and check that out and place your vote, then you can decide what team will be next week. Now today we're talking about the ENFP's four subtypes and this is a revisited video because I have updated and improved a lot of what I previously knew about the ENFP. And I'm here to talk about what the ENFP's will look like because as an ENFP you might have come to notice that other ENFP's you met might not, be a, might not look like you. You might look different from others. So why? Why are you different? Or why are they different? I mean, it might not be you that are the different one. It might be them. Who knows? Well, through this, there is a healthy pattern for ENFPs, and there are unhealthy patterns for ENFPs. And the ENFP at their best acts on high energy and high motivation towards their goals. But the unhealthy NFP acts more on stress and anxiety. They act to relieve stress and anxiety placed on them from the world. Pressures, demands, and things that can get them out of their comfort zone. The NFPs can, through this, go into this kind of automaton state in times where they act purely uh, to get rid of obstacles, purely to... Uh, purely to discipline themselves, purely to... Um, relieve a bad memory or a bad trauma from the past. And uh, ENFP has uh, a wide variety of different behaviors beyond this. The ENFP at their worst will look very differently from an ENFP at their best. And uh, beyond that, there are many halfway or in-between patterns out there. There is the critical parent and there is the stressed tense child. Uh, there is the anxious child and there is the tense parent. So you can pull between different archetypes in yourself and different archetypes will push you in different directions. And what I noticed with the ENFP is that the most common variations are the ISFP-like ENFPs and the ENTJ-like ENFPs. And these two can look like night and day because... The ENTJ-ish ENFPs are in the sidekick state. They are people that are working to prove themselves within a field, within school, without the workplace. They are people that are working to establish themselves or a project. They are usually people that have strong projects or strong ambitions, but that act rationally towards these motives, acting within the rules, within the goals of the establishment, to advance within their workplace or field. Now, the ISFP-like ENFPs are rather going to be more the critical parents of the ENFPs. They are strongly aware of, in all kinds of ways, um, what their inner emotional life looks like. They are sensitive. They are people that uh, process themselves deeply and critically. They think about themselves and who they are and what their essence is, and they think about their essence from a very critical, self-critical perspective. They worry something is wrong with them, that there is some deeper issue with them that uh, is bothering or weighing down on them. And that is often what brings out the four in an ENFP. There are a lot of ENFP fours out there, and uh, ENFP fours are more likely to be in the ISFP subtype, while the ENFPs in uh, the psychic state are more likely to be in the seven. The ENTJ-like ENFPs have a higher sense of energy and motivation. They tend to feel more stable and more sure of themselves. They tend to be less turbulent, but they tend to be also more tense. They can look very tense over their work or over what they have to do in life. They can be somewhat hyper-focused and obsessive about uh, their work or about their school. They can think to themselves constantly, I have to keep on working this, I have to work harder, I have to push myself harder. And uh, they can be actually quite scattered because when perceivers become more tense and when their perceiving function goes into hyperdrive, often due to strong goals and strong outer expectations, 
they become scattered. That's how they respond to it. They end up doing too much at once and they end up multitasking like crazy and they like end up jumping from task to task. It um, is generally true that uh, the ENFP can jump between all of these subtypes. They can jump from the ISFP and into the ENTJ or back to the ENFP or even at their worst to the ISTJ state, the crisis state. But when um, the ENFP is happy, healthy, centered, they are going to um, look more like normal ENFPs. They are going to be creative, they are going to be good at spotting patterns, they're going to be good at planning, they're going to be good at understanding others, they're going to be able to understand people from multiple perspectives, they're going to be great conversationalists, great for discussions, great for bringing out the best in everyone around them. The ENFPs are idealists at their best, they're explorers at the best, they bring up new information, they share information with others, they show tests and uh, show different options, bring up different opportunities to all of us. But the uh, ISFP is going to be a lot less about patterns, a lot less about new trends, and a lot more about past examples and past experiences. They are going to judge their life more on what they have previously experienced and what they will, will come to experience in the future, what they are experiencing right now. Every pattern they notice, they study from this IS perspective of uh, what have I experienced in the past. Everything comes down to their old traumas or their old experiences and they judge and compare and contrast, sometimes unfairly so, Compa comparing um, their new potential dates to their past dates and comparing everything to everything and um, noticing only the similarities and kind of missing the new potential. So by becoming more, the ISFP has to become more aware of the new potential to kind of switch out of this and to enter more into their flow state. The ENFP in the ENTJ state has another issue, of course, and uh, that is the lack of the feeling perceiving function. That is the hyperdrive into the thinking and judging function. That is the hyper focus on organization, order, and having a scheme or procedure for everything you do. Understanding everything according to a score list, having a scoreboard, measuring who is doing the best, who is doing the most, who is doing the least. Uh, and being hyper focused on that level of that thinking level, that scoreboard, rather than what uh, you feel about another person, what their intentions are, what the best in every person is. Uh, this is not the ENFP that looks at people as opportunities waiting to emerge. These are the people that look at uh, others based on, well, of course, there is the opportunity part of it. Uh, it's still EN, but it's, it's judged from such a logical angle. It's uh, not based on intentions, it's not based on people's core motivations or what you think their pur purpose is, but it's based on uh, how they do at work, how they do at mechanical tasks, how they do in a strictly logical sense and fashion. ENFPs also can fall into two other variations beyond this. Uh, obviously the the INTP state exists. There are ENFPs that go more towards being INTP-like and uh, often what tends to happen here is the ENFP who feels repressed or not able to express themselves in groups who feel excluded from others can sometimes fall into the pursuit of mastering a skill or improving themselves in some way. They can feel judged by others and when and because they are usually so aware of what other people are thinking about them in that judgment they can end up tuning out completely of the group and going out of it and uh, self shows, into self-chosen exile if you may. Uh, here the ENFP finds themselves instead maybe mastering the a new instrument, maybe developing a new skill, maybe learning something new, a new task. Uh, the general issue here is that uh, this is a more anxious and negative state for the ENFP. Uh, it's not associated with growth as much as uh, isolation. And uh, it's also an automaton state because it has nothing to do with what you want to do, what you enjoy doing. It has much more to do with pure self-improvement and the pursuit of pure improvement. Finally, there is the ESFJ state, the princess state in a sense. Uh, 
And uh, ESFJ, who is more towards the princess archetype, is uh, going to be much more, in a sense, um, idealistic. It's not so much about opportunity anymore, but it's about, uh, you know, that uh, raw experience of everything. It's about having the tastiest meals, having the strongest experiences. It's about uh, having... Um, and constantly thinking about disciplining yourself, diets, it's always about the diet or a self-disciplinary project, sports, something that can push yourself in some way. Uh, the ESFJ, like I in ENFP, is uh, often going to have a sense of purpose or motivation. They are something they love a lot, something they are very connected to. They are going to feel... Uh, usually they are going to have uh, connections that they are valuing very strongly. They're going to be very family-oriented, very familiar. And often this is the mom archetype sometimes because, well, or the cat mom or the mom or something. like It's the archetype of someone who uh, is the very devoted to their family or to their siblings or close ones. Um, what you can say about this also is that this is an unusually communications-oriented ENFP. They are into communication overdrive almost, always sharing everything on their mind, always sharing everything they think with others, always constantly trying to sell everything to others and to get others along with their plans or their motivations. Um, this is the campaigner ENFP in a sense, uh, the ENFP that uh, is uh, trying to sell their ideas and what they want to others. They can come off a little more like trees uh, if you take the Enneagram, where the INTP like ENFPs can come off a lot more like fives. Then, of course, um, the ISTJ like ENFP can come off a lot more like a nine. And finally, the normal ENFP at their best tends to come off as some kind of seven or SX like type, uh, often because it's uh, so much about merging with the world, so much about oneness with the world for the ENFP. It's so much about uh, your connection to the world and how involved you are in all the things happening around you and how immersed you are with new potential and with new possibilities, how creative you feel you can be and how, you know, how uh, free you are to express yourself in a group, how a much of part you feel of your culture, of uh, where you live, who you are with. Uh, the ENFP has so many core drives that are so important to them. And uh, what the subtypes paint show, really, is that uh, we can go into any kind of behavior, we can act like any type, we can act like INTPs, we can act like ESFJs, we can act like uh, ENTJs, or like... Um, yeah, ISFPs, we can act like so many different types, but all of them are going to vastly impact our health and our motivation and our energy. And generally, the ENFP that goes into introversion will become more anxious, more self-critical, more focused on the negatives, more focused on traumas, where the ENFP that goes into sensing is going to appear more overwhelmed, more, uh, in a sense, uh, overflowing. They're gonna look. Uh, they're gonna feel intense. They're gonna feel like they are losing perspectives on what of the room and of what's happening around them. The ENFP going into thinking is going to feel much more automaton-like, and finally, the ENFP that goes more into judging is going to become a lot more scattered. Uh, they are planners. They are people that have a lot of things on their plate, but too much. They keep missing things. They keep coming late to things. They keep forgetting about things. The judging function can sometimes uh, can easily slip into sloppy planning or over planning or to the point of uh, forgetting about important things. So keeping all of that in mind and learning to be smart about how you use your functions and how you access them because it's not that you shouldn't access your inferior functions but it's that you should be smart about it it's that you should whenever you can invent strategies to not have to engage them to not get too burdened by a discipline to not waste too much energy into sensing to not uh, uh, give up too much of your power into thinking uh, to not uh, become too tense or too uh, preoccupied through judging. It's uh, not becoming too anxious through introversion. It's basically managing your energy, managing your mood, 
finding flow, finding that comfort zone for you, finding, finding that pleasure zone for yourself, finding that place that really makes you thrive. And the subtypes theory is just meant to help you that, in that purpose and to that way. And uh, showing you what other people might be struggling with. Uh, teaching you that a tense person is not necessarily a judging or a thinking type. And an anxious person is not necessarily an INFP. And yeah, it's not... Our struggles don't define us. They just tell us where we are right now. That's my ending message for today. And I hope you all enjoyed the CNFP subtypes video. Uh, and uh, if you did, if you want more videos like this about your type, 